Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. This Carson Wentz news is going to be on my brain for the next 10,000 hours, so bear with me. And one of the things that popped into this mind of mine was it's so funny to me that at the time of drafting Jalen Hurts, they obviously valued him as a quarterback that could play. They figured it would be great to take him with their second round pick instead of helping out the quarterback that they just paid in Carson Wentz. Yet here we are, just a year later, Carson Wentz is out of town and there are reports saying that the Eagles are not sold on Jalen Hurts. They might go down another road. They might go draft a quarterback with the sixth overall pick or they are actually going to jump up, maybe make a trade to get the three and take a quarterback. The point is, no matter what they do, it's not ruled out a question here to take a quarterback because they are not comfortable with Jalen Hurts. But what the hell were you doing at the time of the draft when all of us were screaming that you're ridiculous and you're overthinking things and you're being morons and you're just thinking irrationally? I don't know what you were thinking at the time of Jalen Hurts. It made no sense at the time and it will never make sense to me ever. But how are we one year removed from that time And now all of a sudden, when the guy that you valued so much can be your franchise quarterback, you're questioning if he's the guy. No, they might run with him. And I think running with him is the best thing to do. I hated how they handled the Carson Wentz situation. I really do. With that being said, I hated the way that they kind of bounced around the mindset of the quarterback position. It should be set in stone. You are committed to the guy. And don't tell me what they paid him. So they're obviously committed. No, no, no. They did not handle showing Carson Wentz properly. The way that you need to commit to a quarterback. They didn't do that fully. And I know some are ready to go. These Carson Wentz haters. Well, Aaron Rodgers sure stepped up. Aaron Rodgers. Go look at his age. Go look at where he is. And the track record of the Green Bay Packers. Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, like they have a more realistic and reasonable track record to go off of when it comes to that. Uh, the, the second round gadget quarterback right after paying Carson Wentz at age 27. Like nothing ever will ever be similar to the scenario that we are going through right now. That's why it's as big of a story as it is and it's outrageous to this crazy level. Because this is bizarre. We are living in a sicko world right now. Literally. And figuratively when speaking about Carson Wentz. I want them to treat Jalen Hurts with respect. I want them to handle this properly from a, hey, maybe not commit to it to a, to a full level like you did with Wentz and like you do with true franchise guys because realistically, he doesn't show you that, and he hasn't shown you that in limited play. But at least give him the opportunity to either win the job or lose the job. And just to be clear, when I look at what happened, it all starts with the organization, but the way I view it, it's very close, very close to 25% Doug Peterson's problem, 25% Carson Wentz is an issue, 25% Howie Roseman, 25% Jeffrey Lurie. Now, maybe it can move up and down just a tad or so, but when you look at this situation, it doesn't go on one guy. And that's why the section of the crowd that hates Carson Wentz, oh, I don't want him here, he's a bitch, he's a loser, he's a a crybaby, He, he has no fight in him, like, those people are ridiculous. But Howie Roseman... Jeffrey Lurie, 50% of the issue starts with your front office. That's a problem. And we had Rob Motti of the Associated Press on the Sports Pass yesterday. And what he told us was, when it comes to Howie Roseman, when he talked to other people who have played in this organization, been around this organization, it is toxic. It is a toxic environment, and it is not ran properly. Now, of course, that's not breaking news, considering we can all acknowledge where we are today. 
But when you hear all this talk about how it is because of one man, and then Mike Gill asked him a question, which I'm smiling behind the microphone when he's doing it because I know what he's getting at. And if you don't know much about Rob Motti's background, him and Carson Wentz are close, very close in terms of media closeness. So when you want to look at a Carson Wentz story, you know, Rob Motti has the version that is on a Carson Wentz side of things. But he's a very good objective reporter here. I'm not making it seem. But it, he is in the general vibe of, you know, Carson Wentz, pro Carson Wentz. And he's aware of that and he knows that. But he does a great job looking at it objectively. My point is, though, he was asked about Carson Wentz and Howie Roseman. And Gil brought up, if Howie Roseman left and magically disappeared and went up to Jeffrey Lurie and said, Jeffrey, thank you so much, but I'm going to step down. I don't think it's right for me to be here. Now, I know Eagles fans would love that and applaud. Unfortunately, this is a hypothetical. But would Carson Wentz be here? Do you think it would play out differently? And Ramani said it, it would play out differently. So I think that tells you everything you need to know when you tie together that people who used to be around this organization, whether it's players or coaches, says that it, it is a toxic environment from the top. And then you hear that, hey, if, if Howie Roseman wasn't here anymore, then this whole entire dilemma of Carson Wentz would be different. Well, we know what's going on here. And Jeffrey Lurie, sadly, is the guy that makes this decision, which crushes me. But I, I do look at it as 25, 25, 25, 25. They all have a part in this problem. Now, you can also throw in injuries, which is just a common football issue that every team goes through. They seem to get depleted more than anybody else out there. I just can't put the blame on one dude. It, you can't put the blame on one thing. And while it's 25, 25, 25, 25, just to keep it 100 here, when something goes bad to this level, you look at the top first. So I do think that, Jeffrey, there is a list to this 25% in terms of power and in terms of how much say one has. The owner has more say than the quarterback. Therefore, that 25% holds more value. Same with Howie Roseman. Same with Doug Peterson. Same with Carson Wentz. So while it is all 25, if your voice carries more weight and you have more power as an individual or in a franchise, your 25% ultimately does have more conversation around it and gets juicier when you start peeling back the onion on the issue that you're in right now. I did see a lot of frustration, though, about the return. The return, there should be no issue with the return. Big picture, yes. Well, you can't look at big picture. It sucks. You can't. This is where you are. So based off of where you are, the fact that Howie Roseman has a good chance to get a first-round pick, that is what it is. You can't demand a guy to get something more than what is available. There was one team involved, one damn team, the Colts. You have one team on you and you possibly get a first-rounder? I hate this narrative right now that you gave him up for nothing. You didn't give him up for nothing. You're you're probably going to get a first-round pick. That's a huge deal. It's a big deal to get a first-round pick for Carson right now. I'm a little stunned with everything that's going on, with all these organizations being quarterback happy. Everyone wants a shot at someone. Everyone wants to get their hands on a quarterback that has a skill set that can have a high ceiling. Carson Wentz is that guy. Now, I know the money plays a role, although his contract itself was not miserable. It's the dead cap the Eagles have to hit. Let's be clear. People really do think that Carson Wentz's contract is an abomination. No, it's not. It's going great for a starter. The abomination side of things is as an Eagles franchise, which is going to be in cap hell, and the league did announce that the floor of the cap is going to be 180, which we thought it was going to be 175. So there was a $5 million increase on the floor. So it can be higher than that. But knowing that you're, you're in issues, the fact that this dead cap money is on, is on your books at $34 million, which is the highest ever. In the history of the damn league, it's the highest ever. And you're taking that on right now during a COVID-19 season where it's going to be miserable to, to move pieces around. You're going to see key guys go. Brandon Graham, Brandon Brooks, Lane Johnson, guys, Zach Ertz. You're going to see guys go. Bigger names because you got to fit your ass underneath of this cap. The Carson Wentz contract isn't putrid once you get it off to another team. 
Howie just had to try and save face the best that he could. And going back to the market thing, I just I would have thought that more teams would have been in play. It's not a Deshaun Watson package. The thing is, if the the way the Eagles would get it first, if you're a franchise and you have to give up that first because there's a condition on it, right? The only way the Eagles get it is if Carson Wentz is a stud, if Carson Wentz works out. So it shouldn't be a problem if there's a condition on that second round pick because the alternative of you giving up that first is, well, it's because your quarterback played so damn well. So there shouldn't be an issue there. The fact that only the coach was in play, are, is everybody else scared? Is everybody else worried? And if he, if he does fail, you took a risk. You took a risk. All these GMs, all these people around the league, you take risks in every draft pick, in every free agency attack, in every trade. Everything you do is a risk. But knowing that Carson Wentz once did it in this league, it's crazy to see that only one team was in play. And no. It's not just about the stubbornness or the report. And it crushes me inside. It really does. That here we are today. Even though it was inevitable and we knew it was going to happen, the fact that it did go down, it's somewhat surreal. When you turn on SportsCenter, when you turn on ESPN, when you go to any website, everyone and everyone and everyone and everyone is discussing it. I even got a text from my mom about Carson Wentz. Oh, wait. No, I thought she was talking about Carson Wentz, but she was talking about something else. That's how my day went. It was nonstop as soon as I saw the Adam Schefter tweet. Whenever somebody texted me or reached out to me or or just communicated with me in any way, shape, or form, I just assumed it was about Carson Wentz because my brain is triggered that way. When something of this caliber goes down, I'm just wired in this insane mode of what the hell is going on. And speaking of what the hell is going on, I need to let everybody know about a giveaway I have right now on my Twitter page. That's right. If you go to my Twitter, at Broads81, at the top of my profile, I have a pinned tweet where every Wednesday there is a new giveaway happening. It is weekly, hump day giveaways. Right now, we are giving away a signed picture of Ron Jaworski. All you have to do is... Follow me on Twitter and retweet that tweet. It is so damn simple. Make sure you get yourself entered to win. You don't want to be kicking yourself, right? It's a good opportunity to win a signed picture of Ron Jaworski. It is a no-brainer. And speaking of no-brainer, right now, let's get to the Anytime Hotline. I want to hear the reactions from you at the time of this, and, and I, want to, I want to hear what the people had to say, and, uh, and I will react. So here we go. Let's hop in to the Anytime Hotline. What's up, bros? Uh, I just want to say, as a guy who was really a long time went to it, the, the way that everything went towards him leaving just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, the fact that he just went dead silent and didn't speak to anybody, it looked like he wanted a trade, and it, it just felt like he didn't take any responsibility for the way that he played. It, it wasn't all everybody else's fault. He genuinely played bad. So I, I wish it didn't end like this, but... Man, the way he left just leaves poor taste in my mouth. And this is where I think I have the issue. And you're entitled to your own opinion, and that's fine. And I think that there are a lot of people that feel that way. But with Wentz, to think that all of this happened just because he's, quote, unaware of realizing how bad he played, I just can't support that logic. There's no way that we are in the position we are today because Carson Wentz played so horrific and didn't want to admit it, and then the front office had to move on from him. You know, I I mentioned Ramadi earlier, and he also put out there that there are so many things that were unreported that happened behind the scenes that went on that related to the situation now. And I just think that, that you need to recognize that as a person that is unavailable to see what's going on behind the scenes. And realistically, there's only a handful of people that do truly know. But here's my thing. We know how shady this organization is, right? You can't have it both ways. You can't say you don't trust Howie, but at the same time, oh, Carson's just bad and and this is why he's just so bad. Like, no, no, no. This is all one big problem that's being molded together. That trust that you don't have in 
Howie Roseman and the dysfunction of this franchise and, and the lack of support and the lack of understanding and the lack of communication and the toxic environment all played a role. To act as if in a big business like the Philadelphia Eagles, there's no way in hell that shady nonsense can happen behind the scenes to result in one of the most epic downfalls in sports history, franchise history. Yeah, well, if it's sports history, it's franchise history too. To act as if there's no correlation there, that's bonkers to me. We've all been around businesses in our own rights, in our own lives. That isn't even at the big business level of the Eagles. Just think about everything that could be happening behind the scenes. There's no way the simple answer to this is just one man had a personality problem. That's literally impossible to me. So I, I'm not rubbed off the wrong way. Do I like how he handled it? No. Would I have went silent? No, I wouldn't have went silent. But I always like the way the pros and cons of all of this. If he was to speak, and let's say he was honest. Let's say he stood up to the podium and said, I don't like Howie. Doug, I didn't like his play call. We would rip the guy. We would destroy the guy. And I know right now you're all probably thinking, well, at least he'd be honest. But, but that's not how it works. Why put yourself in a situation to speak and say something wrong? And I'm not saying how I would handle it, but I'm clearly analyzing the way he handled it and the way that his agent handled it and the way that his team handled it, his surrounding pieces, his supporting cast. The way that they handled this was if we speak, it could get taken the wrong way. It can look bad. You can say the wrong things. Why would you say something? Why would you lie? Just be quiet. And that speaks for itself. It does. We knew that he didn't want to be here. We knew his feelings based off of not saying anything. So your message, the same message gets across. I don't want to be here. So whether you say it or you don't say it, they wanted to go down the path of if we don't say it, we won't get bashed for anything we say. We'll get bashed for not saying anything, but that is better. They weighed that as better than stepping up in front of everyone and explaining what went down. There's no written rule book on the right or wrong way to do it. I wouldn't have done it that way. When my character gets questioned to the level it did for Carson Wentz, I'm going down the road of supporting myself and taking a stand. Carson did it. But guess what? He's in Indianapolis with Frank Reich and Press Taylor and Mike Groh. He's where he wants to be. So if you're looking at the grades, and I saw Mike K of NJ.com do this, if you're looking at the grades, what's Carson Wentz get? He gets an A. Look where he is. Bitch, you complain all you want. He doesn't care about you. He cares about himself. Which he should in this situation. And he got exactly where he wanted to be. Look at his destination. And he's probably going to have a hell of a season. I would anticipate him bouncing back. I wouldn't have done it that way. But I don't knock him either. The more and more I think about it. Uh, there were times where I hated it during the ugly moments of it, but then there was a time of no return. And, and from there, I just kind of respected the silence because I, I understand it's it's not easy to see from the surface. You got to dig back a little bit, dig, dig deeper a bit when it comes to how Carson approached this. And he's where he wants to be. It had to be done. I'm not absolutely happy about it, but it, it had to be done. Uh, Second and two seconds, I think it was. Uh, personally speaking, I didn't think that we would even get that. I thought we would have to trade the first round. All right, well, first off, it was a third-round pick for this year and a conditional second that can turn into a one. But I, I started to hear what you said there, and I really want to continue to play this because I have some thoughts. We need to get that. I thought we would have to trade a first round pick to get rid of Wentz. But in what world would you have to trade a first round pick to get rid of Carson Wentz? I just don't know how how that was ever a serious thought. Now, where the Jared Goff and Stafford trade went down, you did see something, but that was you realized real quick outside of maybe one day or two when that first went away. When that was active, I should say. When that trade was fresh and new, maybe for like a day or so, you just question what the market was. But then you could see that, all right, it's not that. That's its own identity. That's its own trade. Just like this. This is its own scenario. I don't think that this has any value to Sam Darnold or any value to Jimmy Garoppolo with the circumstances of contracts and and players and different tiers of quarterbacks available each team and each trade is going to have its own personality where sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes, the most of the time, majority of the time, the trade that happens prior impacts the trade after. 
but it really hasn't been that way. I, I just, I think that that's just a, a emotional thought fully of, because we knew, we knew for the last how many weeks, two or three weeks, that the Bears, the Colts, they were making offers. So why would you get rid of a first round pick for Carson Wentz? I, a, sixth, a sixth overall? Did you mean this year's? I don't know. I just can't get behind that at all. At all. Uh, overall, this is just a very strange time. Philadelphia Eagles right now. The main problem is still there, though. You, you can get rid of the head coach. You can get rid of the starting quarterback. But the main issue with the team that's been there all along and how he's Roseman is still there. And I'm, I'm not really sure how, how to exactly feel about this. Well, you should feel disappointed. You should feel cheated as a fan because it's pretty damn obvious that it is time to move on from anything Howie Roseman related. And I guess what you can, and I'm not even about this. I'd rather see them succeed. See, here's the thing. There's probably Eagles fans out there that would want this team to fail so Howie could be fired. But I look at it as I want this team to succeed because I don't give a damn how this team succeeds. If Howie Roseman's here and the team succeeds, I don't care. I don't care. That would be a good thing. It would be a good thing if Howie could turn this around because there's this side of people who despise him to the nth degree that would rather this team just lose miserably than the team get back on track if that meant Howie Roseman was in place. I don't like Howie Roseman, but if he's winning football games, I like him, okay? If he ends up drafting better than he has over the last four seasons, I like him. If his production is good, I like him. And throughout his 20 years, there were strong moments. There were ugly moments. There were strong moments. And now, we're in the ugliest ever. To make everyone aware here, I don't like Howie Roseman. I'm just saying, I I don't want this team to fail next year. I was going to say, if you're a Howie guy, if they do not have a good season, maybe that's the, the moving point here for Jeffrey Lurie. But I'll counter that by saying... Look at the situation right now. Look at where the team is. If you're Jeffrey Lurie, what's a fair expectation to put on Howie Roseman? You're not going to say go win 10 games, 11 games, because that's not realistic. They don't view the team in that area right now. So if they're saying, hey, if you win 5, 6, 7, we're in that type of category this year, unfortunately. So with that being said, if you get 5, 6, 7 in that range, then you're going to be good. But I mentioned this before, I do feel that we are getting in the territory of how he might be out of here season. Because the fan base pressure is getting louder and louder and louder. And I know that owner shouldn't be thinking about what the the fans think. That He shouldn't put his mind in a fan's mind because then you'll be sitting with the fans. That's the famous line or something of that nature. It's very close to that. I don't know it word by word. You get my point though. I don't want my owners thinking like the fans. Trust me, a lot of you morons are way too irrational. (laughs) What's up, Rhodes? You know what? I thought this was actually a pretty good trade for the Eagles. Carson Wentz, when you look at it, he he had bad play. His contract's atrocious. He has bad injury. His attitude is pretty bad. So, and the Eagles had no leverage in this because the Colts were literally the only team he wanted to go to, so they had to trade him to the Colts. And he still got probably a first and a third round pick, which, you know what? Howie Roseman is playing chess, not checkers. Everyone should get on this guy's level. He's a beast. No, I'm just kidding. But I actually think he did pretty You confused me a bit there. Sorry to cut you off there, uh, but... You confused me there for a bit. I was almost thrown for a loop and ready to rip you into shreds. For what it is, he got the best that is available. For what it is. I mean, you mentioned that the market wasn't there. So for what the market was, you can't really complain. You can complain that we're here. You can't complain about what you got in return once you got in the in the spot that you were in. Uh, with Wentz, though, the injury-prone conversation, I think that that's not really valid anymore. He's had injuries. Is he injury-prone? That's a Davion Clowney hit. I don't label that as something just as 
similar to a knee injury and an ACL stuff or a broken back or anything like that, a concussion getting hit the way that he did, I don't think the label injury prone really fits. I know some use that to make it their narrative, but I think he's a quarterback that has been injured. I don't think that he is an injury prone guy fully. I mean, you go through how many games he missed. It's not like he's missed as many as people make it out to be. We'll, we'll actually go through it now that I brought it up. Let's go through Carson Wentz stats. I don't know why I do that. Every time I look something up during the show, I feel I say what I'm typing. And I clearly mentioned what I was going to look up before I even started. So I don't understand why that happens. Uh, his rookie year, he played 16. His sophomore campaign, he played 13. Now, in 2018 is when he had the back injury coming off of the knee injury. He played 11. Then he played 16, and then this year he played 12, but that wasn't because he was injured. That was because he got benched. So, in terms of how many he missed due to injury, it does get blown out of proportion because, yeah, Nick Foles won those games, which made them have more playoff games. But if they, like, you can't use that against Carson Wentz. If Nick Foles lost the first game against the Falcons, then there would be three less playoff games that Carson Wentz technically missed. He was out of commission then to the point where what happened in the playoffs is irrelevant to how many games he missed because of an injury that happened in the regular season that kept him out. Anyway, so I do think that that's overblown and now to throw around injury prone uh, when he played a full season last year and then this year he didn't get hurt at all. It was just a benching problem, which is bad. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't think it's the same. I really don't. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like the attitude problem. Does he have an attitude problem? Or did he just not have the right coaching staff? Because when he had the right coaching staff, things worked out. And there wasn't much of an attitude problem there. So is it there's an attitude problem? Or is he tough to work with, but manageable to work with? Because those are two different things. Hard to work with, manageable to work with, and his attitude problem's a huge issue. Well, I don't look at that the same way. Antonio Brown, problem. Carson Wentz, hard to work with, tough to coach, can be coached. We've seen it. When it happened, he had hell of success. Well, here I am, acing a math test in school, and all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up. Carson Wentz got traded for basically a first-round pick. Fingers crossed he stays healthy and makes a playoff and a third-round pick. Honestly, I can't be happy. I can't be mad. It's it's about what you'd expect for a guy like him. Uh, you got to wish him the best. I think they're, they're definitely committed to building around Hurts, and I think that starts with taking a wide receiver. I know you're a you're a cornerback guy right now. Here's the thing: we don't have a single like star quality wide receiver. We have a star corner, Darius Lay. He may be aging, but he's still that player. I think a wide receiver's move, especially there's three really good ones, two spectacular ones. But Jalen Waddle, don't forget about him. About the return you expect, Howie Roseman, I, I can't be mad, but, you know, it, it is what it is at this point. Disappointing. Definitely disappointing uh, that we are here. You know, just just hearing these phone calls, it, it makes me sad. Uh, the problem with outside corner, though, is you might have a nice corner in Darius Slay. Do you see what happens when you don't have someone on the other side? You don't have Avante Maddox, and, and uh, you, <laughs> excuse me. You can't use Avante Maddox. And with Darius Slay, he's getting up there in age. You don't have any young players on defense. So whether it's Parsons or Sertain, you need to get somebody that can be a young player that is a cornerstone of your defense that you are going to grow with. Now, that doesn't mean I'd be upset if they took Devontae Smith or Chase or Waddle. Uh, there's so many options on the table, and they have so many holes that I'm for it. Uh, with quarterback, look, I, I don't know what they want to do at quarterback. I'm just saying I'm not against anything. You are in a spot right now where to say you shouldn't take advantage of being up at six to grab a quarterback when your franchise isn't normally up this high in the draft. I can't pretend like that doesn't matter to me. You might have to jump on this. You might have to make sure you, you take a chance on a guy when you finally have a... A pick this high. But I don't want it to be just pick a guy just to pick a guy because you're this high. If they see someone on their draft board that they feel is that great and can be that upgrade of Jalen Hurts and can be that franchise guy, then do it. But if there's not, 
then don't just take it to take it because there are some question marks surrounding some of these guys. Now, I heard Reuben Frank mention Trey Lance. And while I'm not going to judge a North Dakota State quarterback just because it's another North Dakota State quarterback, I won't just tie that to Carson Wentz. But damn, talk about just another funny storyline to add to the mix if they ended up going out and getting Trey Lance after all of this mess. And I wouldn't put it by them because this year, everything has just been hysterical in painful way. Well, it happened. It finally happened, my guy. I don't like this. I mean, I don't like how we got to this point, but at this point, I'm just relieved that the freaking saga is now officially over with. Well, time to roll with Hurts, I guess. Let's uh, give him the support that, you know, he deserves as any other quarterback does. Let's not throw him under the bus this time. Well, this time, but let's all recognize that the one problem that is still here, Howie Roseman. (laughs) <laughs> Howie Roseman is such a hate the face in this city. I don't know if there's one Howie Roseman fan out there. There's no one who is supporting Howie Roseman to that like level to the point we can call them a fan. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that there are people out there, but I couldn't tell you the last time someone's like, you know who does a great job in this city? Howie Roseman. Do you know who I like and I hope stays here for a long time? Howie Roseman. There's just no one. Now, I always bring up, though, around the league, when you look at all of these executives throughout at the NFL, when they do their GM ranking list, I don't like that this is a reality, but Howie Roseman makes the top 10 all the time. So his his people around the league, his colleagues, if you will, all support him and say that he does a top 10 worthy job with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I hate that because there really is no pushback to that. We're talking about others who are in this league, others who are strong in this league. They respect him from what he does from a GM standpoint. They might not like his personality. They might not like him as an individual. They might not like working from him. But if if you look at what he has done, They respect his work. Now, you can be respectful. This happens all the time in sports. You can be respectful and your course could run. Or you could run your course. Your course was run. You could run its course. It can run its course. All of those ways that I just said it, it felt funky. But anyway, yeah, Howie Roseman. It run its course. <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I am right now. Getting back on track, at least trying to, uh, with Howie Roseman, uh, whether he's good at his job or, or you think he stinks or whatever, the recent stretch has been brutal and you just can't defend it. It's time. It's time. It's toxic. It's bad. You need something new. You got to change it all. And I don't think just the head coach and the coaching staff is enough. You got to get up higher in the front office. You got to get into that GM spot. Joe Banner was moved. Howie Roseman should be moved as well. Hey, Broads. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think it was an ad. I mean, it was just it was just bound to happen. Carson gets traded to the Colts. Um, I mean, it, there's really no shocker on where, but the only thing I'm really disappointed about is, is number one, we kind of based our whole offseason around fixing Carson Wentz. You bring in the Colts offensive coordinator, Nick Sirianni, he still don't want to be here, and there's nothing you can really do do about that. And you ship him off, but what you get in return is, yeah, I mean, you potentially could get a first-round pick out of him later. But, like, I would have liked a second-rounder this year. I mean, a third-rounder, I'm like, eh, about it, but, I mean... All we can hope and pray for is that Hurts Hertz develops, I mean, tremendously. Well, I don't know if it's going to be tremendously, but yeah, we do need to pray that he develops. I like the fact that you brought up he'd rather have a second because I was going back and forth with a couple of my buddies about it. Would you rather have a first next year and a third this year or two seconds this year? Like, what would you rather have? I'm just saying, we were just kind of talking about it hypothetically, not in terms like what they actually have and what might have been on the table, but just in general. And let, let's, all right, we'll keep it more realistic. Let's say it's a second this year, a second next year. Would you rather have two seconds and know that is what you're getting or have a conditional second where it might be a first, but it might be a second and a third? I think you take that shot. You take that chance on getting that first-round pick because it is more significant rather than 
two automatic seconds that you know you are absolutely 100% going to get. The fact that you could possibly get that first round pick, I think does hold a lot more weight and I would rather take that chance. If it backfires, it backfires. But if you do hit on it and it does become that first, then you're talking about maybe having two first round picks and getting two game changing players when you really need it. Right now it's not sexy because it's not this season, but as time moves forward and it gets closer to it, well then it's different. And, and with the talk about hiring Nick Sirianni and, and the Eagles going down the Colts Avenue just for Carson Wentz, that's where I, I disagree. I don't think it was to fix Carson Wentz. I think they didn't have a plan after firing Doug because they didn't anticipate Doug being a moron and saying they wanted to promote Press Taylor. So when that all happened and bring back Corey Unlin, like after this all happened, they're like, okay, what do we do? And they hired a bunch of people. And I think Nick Sirianni just popped to them. I think Nick Sirianni just went in for the interview somehow, some way. I mean, I hope it wasn't anything close to what we witnessed to the media when he was first announced because that was vomit out the mouth. But I think they seriously just were wowed by him. Something wowed them. You got to remember, this is the same two people that hired Doug Peterson, a stooge, hired Chip Kelly, hired Andy Reid. Andy Reid was a nobody. All right, they found him. Doug Peterson was a nobody. He's a stooge, won a Super Bowl, though. Crazy. I know. I'm with you. And now Nick Sirianni, a nobody. So I don't think this had anything to do with fixing Wentz. Maybe they thought that it would help out the relationship a little bit more, this fractured relationship, but they were wrong. <laughs> Clearly, they weren't right. All right, we'll take one more here. The ginger Jesus has left the NovaCare complex. It's about damn time. You know, I mean, the deal is what it what it is. It was the worst kept secret he was going to the Colts. The Eagles were never going to get the compensation for him that they seek. You know, I have no issue with the trade, but this story is not over because now it becomes what I fear, which is now the Eagles, in atypical Eagles fashion, will look to take a quarterback at six or look to trade up to take a quarterback. This makes absolutely no sense to me with all the other needs that this team has. If you're going to suck anyway, you might as well hand the keys to the car over to Jalen Hurts and let him drive it for a year. But they won't. They'll end up reaching for Fields or Wilson, and we'll sit back and watch Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase and Micah Parsons and Patrick Sertain dominate next year and we'll shake our head in amazement, wondering how we could screw up again. Here's where I'll counter just a little bit. I, look, I don't want them to take the quarterback, but I'm just saying, if it's available, and if they value him a lot, I, I'm, I, I said this before, I'm not some quarterback college tape guru where I'm going to sit here and pretend I can tell you all about Justin Fields' game relating to the NFL level like these professionals that do break it down. So in terms of where they value Justin Fields, Wilson, or anybody else, Trey Lance, wherever they fall on their board, if they value him to this crazy level, then you know what? You have to. And here's why. There are other hosts. Outside corner. Linebacker. At the defensive front, right? That defensive line's getting up there. Offensive line, as we know. Wide receivers, there's a lot of holes. Safety, what's going on there? There's a lot of holes. The most important position, though. <laughs> People say it all the time. If you're going to find your franchise guy, it doesn't matter what you give up. If you give up three first and you go get your guy who's a franchise guy for 10 to 15 years, well worth it. Well, if you take your sixth overall pick and move up to three, or if you stay at six and you get your quarterback and he is the guy, like you mentioned, well, what if he's not the guy and, and you got to try and, and figure this all out? What if he is the guy? What if it's not a reach? What if he is your franchise quarterback and it costed you one first-round pick, your sixth overall pick? Then the following years, you don't have to worry about that quarterback. Then he can go out and get your wide receiver here and there. 
And I know Devontae Smith, Tracy's name's pop, and it's a sexy pick, but there's wide receivers in every draft. Now, I know the counter. I know, I know, I know. I can hear it already. Howie Roseman can't draft. I can't help you there. This is the way you build a franchise. You got to build through the draft. But if you find your quarterback, if you think he's the guy and he's there, that position is so much more valuable than anything else. I just go back to then, what did you see in Jalen Hurts? Because you saw something in him at 54, 53, 52, whatever it was, when they selected him, when Jeremy Chin was available and he could have went a different route defensively. You saw enough there that you thought, all right, let, let's go get this quarterback. So now, here he is, ready to take a big step and be a starter. You didn't think that highly of him, clearly. So that that's where I'm having the issue, but... The quarterback's the most important position. So that's why I'm not out. I'm not out on a quarterback. If he is your franchise guy, he's your franchise guy. Depends how they see it, though. All right, speaking of what they see, how about what I see? And I see the best solar company in the market. With over 20 years of solar... With over 20 years of experience in the solar industry, I'm all over the place today, Orbit Energy and Power is home to your solar experts in residential and commercial projects. They are dedicated to making sure that your project is completed easily and properly by using high-quality materials and trained professionals to get the job done right. They even take care of all their permitting and fees right there in the office. Their solar program eliminates your electric bill completely. They offer flexible financing solutions such as zero dollars down. There's no risk and no need for investment. They also provide water purification systems, backup energy services, battery storage, and more. So check out their information. It is all down below. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next time.